Hi everybody, welcome back to the Pressing Matters. I'm Scott. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. I couldn't be more excited today to be uh, opening this box set for you. Uh, this is the Let It Be 50th Anniversary box set and it's heavy. Um, it's been sitting here for a day and my idea of torture is not being able to open it immediately. But I wanted to share this with you and unbox it in great detail so you see every element of this box set. Here's the unboxing. So I've taken the liberty of removing the shrink wrap, which I wasn't going to do, but since it's so reflective, uh, I thought you'd get a better look at things without it on. But uh, here's the hype sticker, which says the Beatles Let It Be, 5LP edition, new mixes by Giles Martin and Sam O'Kell. Let It Be, two LPs of outtakes, jams, rehearsals, and studio chat plus the Get Back album, 1969, mixed by Glenn Johns. Let It Be EP, 180 gram heavyweight vinyl, half-speed mastered at Abbey Road, a 100-page hardback book with in-depth essays, track-by-track track recording information, and forward by Paul McCartney. I'll save that to put it inside the box. Also in the box was this, an announcement for the deluxe set on CD the other available formats, uh, five LP box set, a picture disc, one LP, two CD, one CD, and digital. And this is for the um, for the standalone get back book, sixty dollars, available everywhere. So uh, as you can see, even with the removal of the shrink wrap, it's very glossy. This is a heavy box set, very heavy. Um, and this is the spine. Simple, Apple, Universal, the title. The back. Track listings on all the, all the discs in the set. This is a uh, side view of the elements in the box set the book, um, the EP, the Get Back album, the Apple Sessions and Rehearsals, and the, the Let It Be LP. So let's take a look. As you can see, the cover's die cut, and the book provides the photos for showing through the windows. Nice box. Take a look at the book in a minute. Let's take a look at this. So this is the Apple EP. I love that they used a giant Apple 45 sleeve. I remember those vividly. They were beautiful. And I remember when the Apple label came out, it was so innovative to have an Apple and a split Apple on the back. So this is at 45 RPM. And this is the Glenn Johns Get Back LP. To me, it looks a little washed out here. Um, the Beatles really should pop out a little bit more. It's kind of washed out here and here. Probably had trouble getting a good original to do it. But it's nice to have this LP. Uh, this is in a white sleeve with a split apple label. This is the Get Back uh, mixes and rehearsals. I'm sorry, Get Back sessions and rehearsals. It's in a gatefold, glossy white stock track listings. I bet they used the acetate label for this like they have been on the other sets. So this is like custom recordings uh, acetate label. They did that with the others too. And also All Things Must Pass set did that as well. And here's the original LP. 
Um, they've done it in a single pocket, like the British uh, version. The American version had a gatefold and it had a red apple label. Kind of disappointed they didn't use a red apple label. Um, I think, yeah, it's green apple. And the black sleeve. So that's the recorded content. Now let's take a look at this. This is gorgeous. It's heavy, glossy book. No, um, nothing on the spine. Black and white photos on the back. And of course, the photos that show through the gatefold. Let's just flip through it quick. Red Apple. Photos. Linda McCartney's contact sheets. Forward by Paul. Intro by Got, uh, Giles, sorry. Uh, Glenn Johns remembers, essay. Photo from Twickingham. More contact sheets, another essay. Rooftop photos, contact sheets. Now it's starting to look like a scrapbook. And track by track listings. Okay, so they're going to go through each one. Two of us has an essay. Dig a pony across the universe. I me mine. Dig it. Let it be. Maggie May. An Apple Studio photo. I've got a feeling. One after 909. Long and winding road. For you blue. Get back. And some more tape boxes. And the extras. Don't let me down. Probably about the single version. Teddy boy. All things must pass. I guess these are the Glenn Johns uh, tracks. Uh, okay, rehearsals and Apple Jams. I guess they don't do a track by track on that, but story of get back to let it be that convoluted concept that they really didn't know what the outcome would be. Um, I kept changing the direction of the project, but uh, yeah, this looks great, really nice, high quality printing, high quality paper stock, and nice hardbound jacket, illustration by John, I assume, though it's not signed. Very nice. So I'll be taking a listen to this, um, and I will give you my first impressions. So I took an initial listen to the remix only from the box set. Um, the demos and other items will be coming in a later video. But I just wanted to give you an overall impression compared to my first pressing uh, Bell Sound US edition. And um, that was never a favorite of mine. I always thought it sounded crappy. And probably it influenced my um, opinion of the album overall. That and um, you know, seeing the original documentary it was such a downbeat thing. I found that the album was depressing and didn't sound good. Um, here, it sounds much, much better. Um, it's very clear, very detailed, punchy, nice bass. Um, the clarity is what really makes it stand above the original pressing that I have. And the fact that it's pressed so quietly but uh, he hasn't taken a lot of liberties with this. He's been conservative. Um, I think Giles uh, really wanted to preserve Phil Spector's vision while toning down some of the things uh, that were a little excessive. And, um, you know, like on Long and Winding Road, for instance, the chorus and the harp and it was kind of overblown on the original pressing. Um, here it's very tastefully done and actually I love it. It, it enhances it. 
Um, I think the song really benefits from Phil Spector's treatment, just in a lighter, lighter touch and a lighter approach. Get Back sounds fantastic. Two of Us sounds wonderful. The separation in the vocals, uh, excellent. I Me Mine really rocks. Um, what else? Um, I've got a feeling and one after 909, a little bit below some of the best cuts on here. Not, not in terms of content, but in terms of sound. Um, I think that was the same on the original. Let It Be sounds fantastic. Um, Paul's cuts really come off really well here. I wonder why, but, um, you know, like uh, Let It Be, um, Get Back, and The Long and Winding Road sound wonderful. Um, but overall, uh, I think it's a big success. I think it's very clear, very lo lovely sound, detailed. It's almost like George Martin produced the disc, you know, and it kind of brings it up to the level of, the rest of the catalog and i think that's important i think it's a really wonderful session interesting history great songs uh scattered throughout it and this kind of pulls it all together and makes it sound coherent consistent and uh really reflects the original intent of the session as well even the little snips of dialogue sound clearer and it has a it has a live feel in, in a lot of the um, parts of the album so uh, I'll be going over the rest of the set um, in another video, but I wanted to give you a quick impression of what I thought, um, just based on the comparison to the U.S. pressing. I don't have multiple pressings of this album as it never was a favorite, but um, I'm going to enjoy listening to this new remix, and it definitely has taken place, uh, taken first place over my original U.S. pressing. So that's it for today. My quick take on it. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing and uh, we'll see you next time.